this is Mr. Masonet, and what we're going to do today is practice graphing linear equations using the coordinates of the x and the y intercept of the given equation. But first, we have to practice how to figure out what the x and the y intercept is of each given equation. Remember, to graph a line on the coordinate plane, we really only need to know the location of two points. And if the coordinates of the x and y intercept fit on your coordinate plane, then you can just plot those two points and then connect them together to form your line, which represents the given equation. Now remember, the x-intercept is simply where your line will cross the x-axis, shown right here highlighted in blue. And wherever your line crosses the x-axis, we should know that our y value will always be zero. For example, let's examine each of these lines that cross over the x-axis. Now if you take a look at the three points where each of those lines cross the x-axis, we should notice that the y value is going to be zero. Because let's take a look at this point right here. This point is directly on negative six on the x-axis, but it is not located above zero on the y-axis or below zero. We would say that this point is right at zero on the y-axis, as is this point and this point as well. So any point that is located on the x-axis will have a y value of zero. Now, because we know that the y value is always going to be zero for the x-intercept, we can always substitute zero in for the y value and solve for x to find the coordinates of our x-intercept. The converse is also true to find the coordinates of your y-intercept. Wherever your lines cross your y-axis, the x value shall always be zero. Let's take a look at these three points right here. Notice how these points are located at different spots on the y-axis, so the y-values are going to be different. However, the x-values are all going to have a value of zero. Because none of them are located to the left of zero on the x-axis, and none of them are located to the right of zero on the x-axis. They are all exactly at zero on the x-axis. Okay, now that we know that the y-value is zero when finding the x-intercept, and we know that the x value is going to be zero when finding the y intercept. Let's go ahead and use that information to figure out the coordinates of our x and our y intercept of this equation and then connect them together to form our line. All right, let's start by finding our x intercept. So to do that, what we have to do is substitute zero in for y. So we rewrite the equation as five x minus three times zero equals 15. Now, three times zero is zero, so we can simplify this equation to five x equals 15. And just by looking at it at this point, we should know that x is going to be three because five times three is 15. But just to show our work, let's go ahead and divide the coefficient of five by itself and balance our equation by dividing 15 by five on the other side of our equal sign to get a result of x equals positive three. Now, what this means is that when the y value is equal to zero, the x value is equal to three, which means the coordinates of our x-intercept is going to be three, zero. Because when the y value is zero, the x value is three. And on the coordinate plane, the x-intercept of three, zero would be located three to the right of zero, and we would not go up or down. It would be located exactly at this location right here. All right, let's go ahead and figure out what our y-intercept is going to be. All right, because we know that the x value is always equal to zero wherever your line crosses the y-axis, we simply go ahead and substitute zero in for the x value and solve for the y value. Now, five times zero is zero, so really we can just get rid of this part of our equation here, which just leaves us with negative three y equals 15. And we have to take this coefficient of negative 3 and divide it by itself and balance our equation by doing the same thing on the other side of our equal sign. Negative 3 divided by itself is positive 1 because two negatives when you divide make a positive. And that leaves us with y equals negative 5. So we know that when our x value is 0 in this equation, our y value is going to be negative 5, which is our y-intercept. And 0, negative 5 would be located 5 below the x-axis, which is right here. All right, and let's go ahead and connect those two points to form our straight line. Okay, let's go ahead and try another example. 
Okay, let's go ahead and figure out our x-intercept first. And wherever the line crosses the x-axis, our y value is always going to be 0. So we can go ahead and substitute 0 in for y. But because we know that y is going to be 0, and anything times 0 is 0, we could really take this term of minus 5, which I'm going to consider just negative 5 times 0, would be 0. So we can just eliminate this part of our equation and rewrite it as 6x equals 30. And we know at this point that x must be 5 because 6 times 5 is 30. But we're going to go ahead and just show our work here and show that x is equal to positive 5. So when the y value is 0, the x value is 5. So that would give us the coordinates 5, 0, which would be located 5 to the right of 0 on the x-axis. And of course, we do not go up or down on the y-axis because the y value is 0. So we already know that the line representing this equation here is going to pass through this point on the x-axis. This is why we call this the x-intercept. Okay, let's go ahead and figure out what our y-intercept is going to be. Now to figure out the y-intercept, we know that the x value is 0, and 6 times 0 is 0. So we can just get rid of this term right here. And that leaves us with negative 5y is equal to 30. And we divide negative 5 by itself to make positive 1. And we have to balance our equation. So we divide 30 by negative 5. So on the left-hand side of our equation, we have positive 1y, or just y, is equal to negative 6. Remember, a positive divided by a negative will always give you a negative result. So when our x value is 0, our y value is negative 6. So we can go ahead and plot this point on the coordinate plane. 0, negative 6 would be located 6 below, so it would be right here. So the line representing this equation here is going to pass through these two points right here. Okay, let's go ahead and try one more example. Okay, first let's figure out what the x-intercept is going to be by substituting 0 in for y. 8 times 0 is 0, so we can get rid of this term, and that leaves us with 2x equals 56. So we basically have to divide 56 by 2 to figure out our answer, and that is going to give us x equals 28. Now this is going to be a problem for us here because let's take a look. When the y value is 0, the x value is 28. And as you can see with our given coordinate plane, the units are not given, so we can graph 28, 0. So in this case, using the y and the x intercepts to graph would not be a good option here. So we have to figure out a different strategy to graph this equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation and rewrite it in slope-intercept form. Remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b form. Remember, the y and the x of your equation just represents a single point that is located somewhere on your line. The m value is the slope of the line, and the b value is your y-intercept. So the first thing that we have to do is take our x term and move it over on the right-hand side of our equation. And we do that by looking in front of that coefficient and determining whether or not it is positive or negative. And because 2x is positive, we do the opposite, which is to subtract it from itself, because we're going to turn that term into 0. And we have to do the same thing on the other side of our equation to balance it out. So we write minus 2x on the other side. Now, notice that in y equals mx plus b form, we have our x term first. So we're going to go ahead and write negative 2x first, and then we're going to write plus 56. And the reason we write a plus sign is because 56 up here is a positive value. And now we have to bring down our positive 8y, so we can just write 8y. All right, now what we have to do is get rid of this 8 over here by dividing it by itself because we need to leave the y over on the left-hand side. So we divide 8 by itself to turn it into positive 1, and we have to divide both terms on the other side by positive 8. All right, so on the left-hand side, that leaves us with y. And on the right-hand side, we have to do negative 2 divided by positive 8, which is negative one-fourth in simplest form, because we can think of 2 over 8 like a fraction, and negative 2 over 8 can be reduced to negative one-fourth. 
and then we bring down our x variable, and we still have to do positive 56 divided by positive 8, which is positive 7, so we write plus 7 at the end. All right, so this value right here is our y-intercept, which is positive 7, so we know that our line is going to cross over the y-axis at positive 7, which is located right here. And because our slope is negative 1 fourth, from this point, we would go down 1 and over 1, 2, 3, 4, and make a new point. And from this point, we would go down 1 and over 1, 2, 3, 4, and make another point. And then we can just connect those three points together to form the line that represents this equation right here. All right, so remember, whenever you're trying to figure out where the x-intercept is of an equation, just substitute the y value with 0 and then solve for x. And conversely, whenever trying to figure out the y-intercept of an equation, just substitute your x value with 0 and solve for y. And if the two resulting points of your x and y-intercepts do not fit on the given coordinate plane, then you might have to use some other strategies, such as changing the equation into slope-intercept form in order to solve. Hey, I just want to say thanks very much for checking out my math video. Please subscribe to my channel so when I upload new math videos, you can become informed as they become available.